I've put every single NHL player back onto the team that drafted them and we're going to see which is the best drafting team. After simulating through the entire season, the Boston Bruins are going to be finishing first in the entire league with a 52-21-9 record. So even after sending everyone back to the team that drafted them, Boston's still coming out on top. Well, of course, my St. Louis Blues were an elite drafting team and we're finishing fifth in the league with a 47-29-6 record. That shouldn't really be a surprise. We've been drafting some studs over the years. And the final team making the playoffs finishing 16th is going to be the Vegas Golden Knights. And basically what I did was I put every undrafted player onto Vegas. Because between Vegas and Seattle, they wouldn't even have enough drafted players to form a team. And to finish it all off, at the bottom of the league, that should be no surprise, the Arizona Coyotes. This team is supposedly going through a massive rebuild right now, where they've acquired a bunch of draft picks, and they're just going to draft players. Yeah, all the players you've drafted over the past 20 years has got you 32nd in the entire league. It's going to be a long rebuild. Also, if you are interested in playing on this roster, I do have it available for download on the PS5. I'm not sure if you can use that on the PS4 as well, but it is available for download, and you can find it under the username Stonehedge2K. And if you do enjoy the roster and are going to play it a ton, make sure you subscribe to the channel too, because this took a long time. Like a long, long time. Looking at the entire league, we got Leon Dry style leading the way with 39 goals and 68 assists for 107 points and not too far behind him was Connor McDavid so the two boys from the Oilers are going to be finishing one and two in the entire league some things never change but one thing is going to be changing is Adam Fox from the Calgary Flames he's going to be leading all defensemen with 78 points consisting of eight goals and 70 assists and although Adam Fox never played a game for Calgary or the Carolina Hurricanes he was drafted by Calgary so that's where he's playing and looking at goalies Carter Hart's leading the way with 42 wins but he's also tied with Spencer Martin 42 with a 908 save percentage with a 271 goals against while picking up seven shutouts so here we are in the postseason. This is what the matchups are looking like. I've transferred all these teams into playoff mode so I can simulate each matchup game by game. And before each matchup, I'm going to be showing you what the two teams are comprised of. So let's start with the St. Louis and Winnipeg matchup. Looking at St. Louis, there's a few key guys we got to bring back, but one of them's a young superstar in the making and Tage Thompson, but Vladimir Tarasenko and David Perron, there's just a few of the guys coming back. It's going to be an all new defense for St. Louis, except for Colton Pranko, as he's the only returning player. And in between the pipes, we're going to have Billy Huso and Jordan Bennington backing them up. So basically last season's tandem. Over in Winnipeg, they got a few key guys coming back. Of course, Patrick Laine is one of them, Evander Kane's the other, and Jack Roslevic. We can't forget about you. Looking at the defense, Jacob Trouba is returning to the team. Well, in between the pipes, Connor Halbuck just keep holding it down like he usually do. It's not taking long for us to head into an overtime matchup, as that's what we're doing in game one. And St. Louis is also going with a very questionable decision, as they're starting Jordan Bennington over Veli Huso. Not sure how I feel about that one. A little over seven minutes into the extra frame, Jack Roslevic's going to find Adam Lowry crashing towards the net, and he's going to bury this OT winner to give Winnipeg a 1 0 series lead. And Winnipeg's doubling down on that in game two as they're smoking St. Louis 5-0. After having a 3-1 lead in the game, St. Louis is going to blow it, but luckily a late goal from Tarasenko is going to be forced in overtime. All right, before we see the overtime goal here, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. We're in the fourth overtime here. So you know what that means? I had to sit through three other overtimes, like the full entire length. It might have been on five minute periods, but for me to see this overtime goal took over 20 minutes. I sat here watching the AI play for over 20 minutes just so I could see St. Louis win this game. Please subscribe. This was painful. Full. Winnipeg's not going to allow St. Louis to get back into this series as they're going to take game four five to one and in game five they're eliminating the Blues in another 5-1 win. Heading into our next matchup we're going to have the Calgary Flames taking on the Edmonton Oilers. It should be no surprise with Calgary they're bringing back two of their superstars in Matthew Kachuk and Johnny Goudreau but looking at the defense they got Adam Fox although we never played a game with them he was technically drafted by Calgary so he's going to be here. Well in between the pipes we're going to have Borsois a bit of a downgrade from Markstrom but I think he can hold it down for this team. Now looking at the Edmonton Oilers this should be a good team. Of course you can have McDavid and Dreisaitl, but you also had like five first round picks in like an eight year span or something. You should be a good team. Defensively, it's probably a bit of a downgrade for Edmonton, but they still got Nurse to lead the way. But I'm not sure if Stuart Skinner is going to be able to be the guy for them. Similar to the Winnipeg St. Louis series, in game one, we're going to be headed to overtime. But in game one, it looks like Connor McDavid's going to be the hero as he's beating Borsois to give Edmonton a 1 0 series lead. But it doesn't look like one overtime game is enough as we're going to be heading to another OT game in Calgary. And once again, overtime, Edmonton's coming out on top as Jordan Eberle's getting the feed from McDavid and he's going to be ending this one. So you know what's better than two overtime games? games three overtime games because we love overtime games around here luckily these overtime games aren't taking too long and this time leon drysaw is going to be burying the winner and now edmonton's got a commanding 3-0 series lead so i doubt they're blowing that in game four calgary doesn't feel like getting swept so they're going to be stealing this one away from edmonton and in game five another overtime game because why wouldn't we need another overtime game once again overtime i feel like i've said this before and it's because i have Connor mcdavid is going to send it over to jordan everly who's going to beat the goaltender and he's going to allow edmonton to advance to the second round the next matchup we're going to be seeing is going to be the Philadelphia Flyers taking on the New York Islanders. Looking at the Flyers team, they got some great forwards here, but I just don't think it's enough. Like looking at the defense, Gossip Bear and Provorov leading the way, I just don't think that can be a Stanley Cup winning defense. And in between the pipes, you got Carter Hart, and maybe he can steal you a few games. Looking at the New York Islanders, John Tavares is returning to the team, and he's looking to win this team a Stanley Cup this time around. While looking at this Islanders D 
defense, it's elite. And I think elite might be an understatement. Devon Taves, Ryan Pollock, Adam Pellick, Jared Spurgeon, and Noah Dobson. You also have Calvin DeHaan there, but I mean, he's not like the rest of these guys, let's be fair. This defense looks incredible. And with Sorokin manning it in net, this team's definitely one of the favorites to win the Stanley Cup. So in game one, Philly's gonna be shutting the Islanders out. Not really looking like favorites right now. And in game two, the Islanders aren't gonna be stealing this one because we're headed to overtime. Halfway into the extra period, I don't know how, but Jeff Carter's somehow getting past the defenseman here, and he's gonna get a shot off on Sorokin, which is beating him. And with Philly now having a commanding 2-0 series lead, the Islanders might be in trouble. But luckily, the Islanders are responding in game three, and they're taking this one 4-1. One, but Philly's responding in game four and now they have a 3-1 series lead so you might be saying bye to the Islanders early and it looks like that's exactly what's happening is the New York Islanders are going to be falling to the Philadelphia Flyers in five games and the dreams of the Islanders winning a Stanley Cup are now over definitely wouldn't have expected that after looking at their defense we're going to be seeing another match about the Eastern Conference as the Tampa Bay Lightning are taking on the Ottawa Senators looking at this Tampa Bay team a majority of the core guys are still here in Stamkos, Kucherov, and Point while looking at the defense you can't say the same here because the only returning guy is going to be Victor Hedman well I guess Ross Colton's returning that just doesn't matter Victor Hemmings the only important guy, but they got Vasilevsky in net, and you already know Vasilevsky could win you a Stanley Cup. The Ottawa Senators are going to see a ton of players returning to the team as Mika Zibanejad and Mark Stoner are returning to help the forwards. Looking at the defense, Eric Carlson's returning to the team, so a pairing of him and Shabbat is going to be pretty impressive. While holding it down net for the Senators is going to be Robin Leonard, or it should have been Robin Leonard. I'm about to explain to you why EA is possibly one of the dumbest games I've ever played in my life. Robin Leonard was on this team. Eric Carlson is on this team, and Mark Stone is on this team. For some reason when I imported these teams into playoff mode, EA said, nah, those guys are going to ride the bench because Ottawa already has players in those positions that are currently on the Ottawa Senators. So Mark Stone was benched, Eric Carlson was benched, Robin Leonard was benched, and Chris Dreger was benched. So instead, this is what our team's looking like. So when I sat through all these overtime games that went to quadruple overtime or triple overtime that I literally had to sit here for 30 minutes to watch, only to find out Eric Carlson and all them weren't playing? Nah, EA, you gotta fix that. I shouldn't have to go through and manually put a guy like Eric Carlson and Mark Stone into the lineup. That should be the default. You want your best players playing. But I guess these guys being on the bench isn't gonna hurt the team too much as Brady Kachuk's picking up a hat trick in game one and they're defeating Tampa Bay. But Tampa Bay, of course, is gonna respond in game two. That shouldn't be a surprise and they're evening the series up. Ottawa's once again gonna be taking a lead in the series and they're gonna double down on that in game four and now they got a 3-1 series lead. After having a 4-2 lead heading into the third period, Tampa's gonna be tying this one up and we're headed to OT. So here we are in overtime and I'm gonna keep it a thousand. I have zero clue how Shane Pinto scored this goal. Bro was just flopping like a fish but somehow he got it into the back of the net and the Tampa Bay Lightning are gonna be falling to the Ottawa Senators who are without Mark Stone, Eric Carlson and both their goalies. Interesting. It's time for us to head back over to the West and we got the Colorado Avalanche taking on the Vegas Golden Knights, also known as the undrafted players. To improve the forward core, the Avalanche are bringing back some studs in Ryan O'Reilly and Matt Duchesne. Looking at the defense, it might be taking a bit of a hit, but they're going to be bringing in Tyson Berry to reduce that. While the goaltending situation, Spencer Martin's the number one. Yeah, that's a tough look. Looking at the Vegas Golden Knights, it's going to be comprised of players that were drafted by Vegas or undrafted, also known as Nick Suzuki and a bunch of undrafted players. The defense on this team looks pretty solid with Tori Krug and Pyong leading the way, while the tandem for Vegas between Gorgiev and Barbrowski is looking pretty solid. Colorado is going to be taking a close game one, three to two, but Vegas is going to match that in game two as they're evening the series. In game three, Rantanen is going to score a late one, and that's going to send us to overtime. Halfway through the extra frame, Greer is just going to enter the zone, and he's just going to go past everyone. No one's picking him up, so he's going to be scoring the winner. And Colorado is not going to look back. They're dominating game four, and they're one game away from the next round. But in order to get to the next round, they got to win another overtime game. And that's exactly what's going to be happening, as Landis Kaw is going to see Rantanen crashing towards the net, and he's going to be potting the series winner. Time to finish up the Western Conference as the Anaheim Ducks are taking on the Minnesota Wild. Now the forwards for Anaheim, not looking the strongest in the world. They got Trevor Zegers and Troy Terry leading the way, but the defense in this team, it might be better than the Islanders. Shea Theodore and Brandon Montour are the first pairing. The second pairing, that's going to be Hampus Lindholm and Josh Manson, while Cam Fowler and Justin Schultz are going to be manning that third pairing. After I made that statement earlier, I don't think this defense is better, but it's definitely one of the top defensive cores. And they also have Frederick Anderson and John Gibson sharing the net together, so you don't have to worry about goaltending whatsoever. Looking at the Minnesota Wild, Mikel Granlin and Alex Tucker returning to the team, while the defense is going to see Brett Burns, Nick Lay, and Marco Scandell return to help them. And in between the pipes of the Minnesota Wild, they're going to have Darcy Kemper holding it down. Minnesota is going to come out firing in game one as they're stealing it 4-2, and they're not slowing down whatsoever in game two as they're taking that one 5-1. Four straight from Anaheim is going to allow them to avoid falling to a 3-0 deficit, but Minnesota, they just keep pushing, and now they got a 3-1 series lead. And in game 
game five, the Minnesota Wild are just going to be too much for the Anaheim Ducks as they're falling in five games. We're down to our final two matchups in the first round as the Washington Capitals are taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs. There should be no question marks for Washington's offense because the forward core on this team is looking elite. Well, the defense on the other hand, it's not looking terrible, but it's also not looking elite. So maybe John Carlson can be the difference maker for them. Luckily, the Capitals got two solid goaltenders in Nesson Varlamov and Samsonov, so they don't have to worry about that. Looking at the Toronto Maple Leafs, the top six for this team is definitely not going to be an issue, but the bottom six could be because I'm not convinced with that. The defensive core on this team is not looking the best, and with James Reimer in between the pipes, I just can't see this team going on a deep run. But Toronto's going to be looking to prove me wrong as they're only going to be allowing one goal in game one. And some how they're doing the exact same in game two they were winning five to one and now they got a 2-0 series lead okay how is this team this good defensively they're up 3-0 in the series now against a high-powered washington capitals offense with a poor toronto maple leafs defense the washington capitals are finally able to break through but they still got a long ways to go and toronto's going to stop them in their tracks as they're taking game five three to two and they're advancing to the second round never thought i'd say those words in our final matchup of the first round the boston bruins are going to be taking on the pittsburgh penguins the main guys for boston are going to be sticking around here and brad marchand patrice bergeron and david pasternak along with david Krejci, but with Tyler Sagan and Phil Kessel returning, the forwards are still looking strong. The right side defense is looking fantastic, but Charlie McAvoy is your number one and Dougie Hamilton as your number two, you don't have any weaknesses there. And in net for the Boston Bruins, although they lost Allmark, they got Jeremy Swayman and they can rely on him. And our final playoff team we're going to be looking at is going to be the Pittsburgh Penguins, Malkin, Crosby, and Getzel on that first line, and the rest of the forward core is just not that great. They have a ton of NHL talent here, but there's just a lot of bottom six forwards here. I think the lack of forward depth is going to be hurting this team. Similar to the defense, Jake Muzzin and Chris Letang got that first pairing but those next two pairings they just can't compete with the best in the league and in between the pipes they got Tristan Jari Marc-Andre Fleury but since Jari is a higher overall he's going to be starting over Fleury that's not my decision I just want to specify that the game wants Tristan Jari to start over Marc-Andre Fleury not me personally because I would have gone with Fleury and it looks like my decision would have been right as Boston's going to be taking game one three to one and then they're going to be stealing game two two to one in game three the Penguins and Bruins are going to exchange goals and now we're headed to overtime a little over seven minutes into the extra frame what is Jari doing here respectfully this was possibly one of the dumbest things I've ever seen a goalie do. Just cover the puck, like what type of save are you making there? Try to give up a bigger rebound next time. And then in game five, the Bruins are going to eliminate the Penguins because Tristan Jari is a clown. Cover the puck next time, my guy. So here we are, we're finally in the second round. The Colorado Avalanche are taking on the Winnipeg Jets. Edmonton's got Minnesota. Philly's taking on Toronto, while the Bruins, they got the Ottawa Senators. Winnipeg's going to come out flying in game one as they're taking it five to three. And then they're doubling down in game two, picking up five goals once again, and they got a 2-0 series lead. It should be no no surprise Colorado is not going to be folding easily as they're stealing game three but the Jets they just continue to push and now they got a 3-1 series lead Winnipeg I'm going to keep it a thousand I was not familiar with your game game five is going to be going back and forth but a late goal from Landis Cog is going to be forcing overtime in triple OT Patrick Lyon is going to be picking the puck up along the boards he's going to dish that over to Kyle Connor and Kyle Connor he's going to be winning this one and allowing Winnipeg to advance so now we know that Winnipeg's in the conference finals we got to see who they're going to be taking on the high powered offensive Edmonton is going to be helping them take game one however the Minnesota Wild they're going to be responding game two with some great defenses that are going to be shutting out the Oilers. In game three, it's been a tight one this entire game, and now we're headed to overtime. And in overtime, with absolutely no one picking up Matthew Boldy, he's going to be beating Stuart Skinner to give Minnesota a 2-1 series lead. But one thing we know about this Edmonton Oilers team, they can score goals. They're potting five in game four, and they've evened up the series. Game five was a close one between these two teams, but Jordan Eberle is going to pot an insurance goal with less than a minute left, and Edmonton's now one game away from the conference finals. But it's just not that easy for the Oilers, as Minnesota's stealing game six, and now we're headed to game seven. And what's going to make game Game 7 even more entertaining, overtime. In the final minutes of overtime, Andrew Cogliano is going to get two shots off. Both of them are getting stopped. Yamamoto, on the other hand, he's picking up the juicy rebound and he's going to be burying the series winner and that's sending Edmonton to the conference finals. Now that we know what the matchup in the West is, it's time for us to head over to the East and we got the Philadelphia Flyers taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs. It looks like we're going to be starting off where we just left off as Toronto and Philly, they're going to be heading to overtime in game one. With a little less than nine minutes left in overtime, Toronto's on a two on one. This is going to be an easy one timer for them and they're going to be taking a 1-0 series lead. But the Philadelphia Flyers, this team's got some grit and they're going to be evening the series in game two. A 3 0 lead through two periods is going to be enough for Toronto and they're taking a 2 1 series lead. But game four is not going to be as easy as these teams are heading to overtime. And right off the faceoff, Cam York's going to try to get a shot off. It's getting blocked, but Fairby, he's going to launch this one from the point, and somehow he's going to be beating James Reimer. Now that the series is tied up, there's only one way to handle this. Head into overtime in game five. Connor Brown's going to be spotting Kadri wide open in the slot. He's going to get enough time to rip one off here. He's beaten Carter Hart, and now Toronto's one game away from the conference finals. And in game six, Toronto's dominating from start to finish. They're pot in five, and now they're headed to the conference finals. Our final matchup of the second round, that's going to be the Boston Bruins taking on the Ottawa Senators. And as we know, this Ottawa 
Ottawa team, EA screwed them. All right, I think I have to take everything back. Ottawa just beat Boston 5 0. Although it is just one game, a 5 0 game one win, they're setting the standard. Okay, I was getting carried away. Boston's going to even it up in game two. But in game three, we got ourselves an overtime matchup. In the final minutes of overtime, Shane Pinto is going to be dishing it back. And I don't really understand how this beat the goalie. I'm just going to keep it a thousand. Brady Kachuk, how'd you get this five hole on Swayman? And after that greasy goal by Kachuk, Ottawa's not looking back. They're taking a commanding 3 1 series lead. And then in game five, they're going to be headed to overtime once again. With just seconds left in the period in game five, Brady Kachuk's going to get a shot off. Tim Stutzel's going to get control of the rebound. And he's going to bury this one. And Ottawa's now made it all the way to the conference finals without having like four of their best players. I've jumped on the Ottawa bandwagon. This team needs to win the Stanley Cup after EA screwed them like that. So here we are in the conference finals. The Edmonton Oilers taking on the Winnipeg Jets and the Toronto Maple Leafs taking on the Ottawa Senators. We made it all the way to the conference finals and now we have four Canadian teams. At least they're finally going to be celebrating in Canada somewhere. So to start the series off with Winnipeg and Edmonton, Winnipeg is going to score six goals in the third period to win game one. This team just scored six goals in the third period. Nah, they got this series on wraps already. I might be speaking a bit too soon though because Nuge is pot in two in game two and now he's evened up the series. And in game three, we're going to be head to overtime. Early into the extra frame, Leon Drysaw has got the puck and they're just giving him way too much space. He's going to beat Halbuck and now Edmonton's got a 2-1 series lead. But they're not going to have a series lead for too long. Winnipeg's pot in five in game four and they've evened the series once again. The high-powered offense at Edmonton just can't be slowed down because this time around Edmonton's pot in five and now they got a 3-2 series lead. I guess goaltending has just left the room in this series because Winnipeg's going to score seven. In the three games that Winnipeg's won in this series, they've scored six goals, five goals, and seven goals. So unless they score nine goals in the next game, I would say Edmonton's taking it. But I guess the Winnipeg Jets aren't going to need nine goals because the Edmonton Oilers are completely folding, only scoring one, and now Winnipeg's off to the Stanley Cup final. But first, we have to find out who they're going to match up against, the Toronto Maple Leafs or the Ottawa Senators. Toronto's going to be taking control in game one as they're winning 4-2, but Ottawa's going to keep the series close as they're winning game two with a shout from Sogard. But in game three, Sogard's not going to be able to stop a puck whatsoever, Toronto is scoring seven, and now they're up two to one. In game four, with less than a minute left, Mike Hoffman's going to be scoring a goal to force overtime. Time. And then quadruple overtime with less than a minute left, Tim Stutzel is going to bury the rebound to win this game. I kid you not. From the time of me entering overtime to them scoring this goal, it took 27 minutes to get to this goal. I just sat here and watched. And after that long, thrilling game, Ottawa's not turning back. They're going to score eight in game five, and then in game six, they're potting another three, and they're off to the Stanley Cup final. So here we are in the Stanley Cup final. The Winnipeg Jets taking on the Ottawa Senators. Who would have thought we would see two Canadian teams here? Who would have thought we would have seen four Canadian teams in the conference? finals. Definitely not me. To start the Stanley Cup final off, we haven't played enough overtime games yet, so that's what we're starting game one with. And with Winnipeg on the power play with less than a minute left in the game, they're not going to be scoring. The Senators are going to be potting a shorthanded goal here, and they're taking a 1-0 series lead. But luckily, Winnipeg's able to come out on top in game two to keep this series close. In game three, why don't we head to overtime? We haven't seen enough of those yet. And then triple overtime, so I had to sit through another 15 minutes just to get to this point. Tim Stutzel is going to be burying the winner, and Ottawa's now evening the series. Winnipeg knows they can't go to another OT game because Ottawa just keeps coming out on top and they also don't want me to sit through another 45 minutes just to finish one game. So they're scoring five in game five to give themselves a 3-2 series lead and in game six, Howbuck's going to be picking up the shutout. Winnipeg's winning five to nothing. I want to apologize to Senators fans already. You guys got screwed because of EA. I made sure the right players were on the right teams. I went through hockey reference and checked every single NHL player to make sure everyone was on the right team. And then I went through every single team's draft history over the past 20 years just to double check it everything. And then EA decided, nah, Eric Carlson, Mark Stone, and the goaltenders on Ottawa can just suck it. You guys don't get to play. I'm furious. Absolutely furious. 